Today we're going to be looking at the Character Animation Toolkit, or CAT for short, inside of 3ds Max. And CAT used to be a plugin that you could purchase and install inside of 3ds Max, but relatively recently, 3ds Max decided to make it part of the default program. So what we'll do is go into the Create tab because we want to create something. And with Biped, we went over to Systems and created a Biped from there. But with our Character Animation Toolkit, we're actually going to go into Helpers. And in our helpers, we're going to go from our standard drop down to cat objects. And what we see are a couple of things cat muscle, muscle strand, and cat parent. We're going to look primarily at creating a cat rig using cat parent. So once I click on cat parent, I have a couple of options. I can create a cat rig that's already saved, and they have quite a few by default. And if you create one that you like, you can save it and use it from whenever. So if, for example, I wanted to create an alien using their alien rig, then I can select alien and then come into my scene. And I'm going to click and I can make it bigger or smaller, however I want. And here is a basic cat rig. So we're going to go over a couple of things, but instead of using one of the default rigs, I want to create one that we can use ourselves. So in order to do that, how before we just created a parent and then we chose one that was pre-made, we're going to go to cat parent and instead of using a pre-made, we're going to click none. So when I click none, the only thing I'll have is my parent. And this acts much like the root bone in the biped. So from there, once I've created it, I'm going to go to my modifier tab because I want to modify what I've already created. And here, I'm going to create a pelvis. And when I create a pelvis, it's going to add a bone automatically. And from there, I can select that bone. And I can name it what I want to. So maybe I want this to be my pelvis. So I'll say pelvis. I can use a custom mesh if I want to, which means that you can uh, use any mesh that you have that you want to use. So from, my, from here, I have my pelvis, and I've named it pelvis. I can add legs, add spine, add bones, arms, tails, and rigging. Let's maybe do some like a, like a centaur hybrid type thing. So from here, let's say maybe I'll add a spine or a leg. So I've got one leg. Let's add another leg. Okay, now let's add a spine. Okay. Now from here, I can choose how many bones that I have. So in my spine setup, under bones, I have number of five. Let's maybe make this a lower number, like three. And you'll see now I have three bones in my spine. I can do the same thing with a leg. So if I click on my leg, I have segments. So I can add segments to my, I can make a, another segment within this bone itself. So if I change this to two, now I have two bones in my leg. Let's change that back to one. I only want one. And if, for example, I wanted to add fingers, maybe I wanted fingers. Maybe the back legs are kind of like a lion's back leg instead of a horse's back leg. Uh, you know what? Let's save, let's save the back one or let's save the front ones to be like that. So I'm just going to leave this how it is. And then maybe I'll rotate this and I'll rotate this. Maybe I'll rotate these spine bones because I want them to be more going upwards. There we go. Straighten this out. And on my pelvis, let's add a tail also. So we add that tail and I can rotate it around. I can move it wherever I want to. If I want it to be in a different spot, I can move all these bones to be wherever I want, or maybe I can grab all of them and just rotate them. Let us do that. Now we've got kind of like a, a horse's tail or a dragon's tail or some sort of thing. I can choose how many links or number of bones that I want in that tail if I want, and I can name them 
each one of them anything I want. So from here, let's say that I want to add two more legs. Let's maybe rotate this down a little bit. Okay, maybe I want to add two more legs so I can go and click add a leg and add a leg. And we can see that they're a little bit too long. So if I select a bone, I can modify it. So let's scale it. Let's scale that bone to be a little shorter. Maybe this one to be a little shorter. There we go. And then what I can do, well, maybe I don't like that there. I want to bring that out a little bit. I can do that too. Okay. I can copy what I did from one bone to another. If I select that bone and I come down here to looks like two sheets of paper, we have copy bone settings. Then I can select the other bone and I can paste the opposite or mirror since it's the opposite limb. We can do that here. There we go. Now we match. Now we talked about adding some fingers. Maybe we could use them for claws. So here, this is a leg, but we can also say that we want this to add to work like a palm or a hand. So I'm going to add a number of digits. So let's say for ours, we have three fingers. So with digits, we'll have three. And then we can see here our three fingers. Now, if I only wanted one finger, and here you can see that I have two joints in my finger, but if I only wanted one, I can select one of my fingers and I have bones too, I can change that to one. Or if I wanted, maybe I want three and I can change that to three. I can adjust it how I want to. Let's change it back to two so we're back in line with the rest of them. I can rotate these how I want. I can adjust them pretty much however I want. Okay, maybe we'll rotate these out a little bit. Okay, and then let's see if we can copy this bone and mirror it. And now we have the same digits, the same thing we did to the other bone. So we've got kind of the bottom part of our hybrid. So now let's make the rib cage and whatnot. So I'll go back to the front part of our hybrid. And again, I'm going to add a spine. Maybe we don't want it to be quite so far out, so we'll maybe rotate this upwards. And we can always rotate these bones as well. There we go. And again, I think five is too many for our spine. So again, we'll change that to maybe three. And I can again rotate these where I want them to be. So maybe I want them to have maybe a little bit more of a distinguished look about them. And then from here, this is now the chest of what our human would have a chest. So let's add two arms. So we'll add one on each side. And I can again position these how I want. So maybe let's bring this guy out a little bit. Maybe shorten these clavicles a little bit. And I want my guy to have some fingers. So we'll add a couple of digits. Maybe we'll just go with three just to be just to be easy. And I can scale those how I want them to be. So let's maybe move this up here. Scale these fingers, scale these fingers, scale our thumb. And again, if we select our hand, we can copy our bone setting, select the other hand and paste the mirror. And let's do that with our clavicle as well. Okay. And then one other thing we need is we need a head. So again, I'm going to add a spine but I'm going to choose only one bone. So I'm going to select somewhere in my spine and say one bone. Maybe I'll scale that down. And then I can select my head and I'll name it head. 
maybe change the length, width, and the size or height so it looks more like a head. And now we have a basic cat rig that we made from scratch. We saw how we could take one that's already uh, made, a pre-made one, and how to create that one, which was much easier than what we did. But we saw how we can take the same bones and create pretty much anything we wanted. So whatever mesh that we had, we could pretty much make a rig using cat. So what I would say is maybe find you a mesh that you like and then come in and create a cat rig that can match it and have a lot of fun with it. Cat Character Animation Toolkit is, is extremely powerful and there's a lot of really neat things that we can do. So play around with that and have a lot of fun.